Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, SJW Comic Book Pros are giving a eulogy for the living. Now, before I start, nothing. Uh, not I don't have anything else to promote. Uh, all of my Indiegogo campaigns are closed right now as I start preparing the backers list. I got a lot of work done in the last few days. I've been using this Freedom app to block myself from my phone for hours at a time. So this is Jim Zub. Perch really likes this guy, but it always goes like, he's okay, he's solid, he's not so bad. I'm like, these are all insults. <laughs> to me, okay is worse than bad. Bad at least can be entertaining in some ways. Gabby Rivera, as bad of a writer as she could be, she wrote some memorable stuff. I mean, my freaking company is named after a scene where Gabby Rivera had a cat have its head run over. And then her version of America Chavez, which was as intelligent as Gabby Rivera, was like, Gato, are you okay? It's like, the, the cat has tire treads on its head. It's not okay. So Twitter is still around. I don't know why SJWs are talking like it's gone when they're on it. A few days ago, they are like, oh, uh, Elon Musk broke the WARN Act, which means you need to give people 60 days notice before you have layoffs of a certain amount of people in companies of a certain amount of employees. And they all thought they had it. They're like, ooh, we got them. But they didn't actually read the emails to the, quote, fired employees that they're actually not fired until January or February of next year. They're just employees who are getting paid but no longer have access to the network and are not allowed on the properties of any of the Twitter buildings. Jim Zub says, My fiancé set me up on Twitter back in 2009, reserving my name in case I wanted to use it. A year later, gearing up to launch a new creator-owned comic series, it seemed like a good platform to promote it to readers and retailers. That book changed everything for me. And here's Skull Kickers, which had a brief heyday about 10 years ago. So he had a fairly good launch, but it really didn't go, geez, this is some good freaking coloring. Wow. That is fantastic coloring. So he said he was getting good reviews, he was doing okay, but his career really didn't explode until he started doing some blog posts that were shared on Twitter and went viral. How to break into comics, how to write a comic strip, how to find an artist. How to break into comics <laughs> sounds so old. That just sounds like... I just, when I see stuff like that, it makes me think of those bicycles where the front tire was really large and the back tire was really small. It's like, you don't have to break into comics anymore. You just make them and sell them online. How to write a comic strip? Here's the secret. Five panels for every page. Why? Because five is an odd number, which means they can't do a standard grid, which means the artist has to use their imagination and there are effectively infinity variations of panel layouts when you do five panels per page. So he talks about all the way it's helped his various books. For the most part, I've had a symbiotic relationship with Twitter. We've kept each other going, and both of us have benefited from it. I don't think Twitter is aware of your existence. I know I'm the product by providing content. But the broadcast platform and community it provided was fair trade, as far as I was concerned. Whenever a social media platform desocializes, creating barriers and undue friction between users who want to connect, it starts to crumble. Watching it happen here in such a clear and decisive way is surreal and depressing. The lack of self-awareness here is just astounding. Twitter started desocializing, creating barriers and undue friction, about five years ago. Five or six years ago. And you always see SJWs refer to Twitter as a hellscape, but they are the ones who turned it into a hellscape. Before that, it was basically Stack Overflow that you could check while you were in the line at Whole Foods. It was never meant to be a life destroyer. It was never meant to drive people to suicide. It was never meant to destroy careers or lives. That's what Jim nice guy that you are, your peers did while you watched and said nothing. This $8, maybe $8, do you, do you lose your blue check mark if you already have it? Or can you keep it but only if you pay $8? Nobody's really sure. That's not what desocialized it. 
Desocialize is when you took a very simple app and decided, hey, <laughs> what if we started doing things that would not be allowed in any other part of society? If you work at a physical building and you and a clique of people just decide to completely ostracize and harass and demonize a group of coworkers or someone else in the same building, another company on a different floor, that would be a huge problem. But it was completely normal, normal within an abnormal industry for more than half a decade, Jim, for your peers to completely demonize and defame tens of thousands of people, not just customers and potential customers, but peers in the industry. That was the desocialization. That was creating barriers and undue friction. So he talks about Facebook is still around, but it's not as good for promotion because they limit who it goes out to, unless you pay more for that. And then he says, you know, you should never put all of your eggs in one basket, except for that's what you all did. Your peers did this and you stood by and said nothing, Jim, while they viciously destroyed or hobbled every alternative social media platform. And what did they say every time? That's for white supremacist. The FBI has done studies. There's 7,000 white supremacists in America, a country with one third of a billion people. And every time you have any problem with anyone, which usually just means they voted differently than you do, you label them white supremacists and then you label everything they use white supremacists. Or you say it's transphobic. Oh, you can't use Substack, why? Well, four years ago, one account said one thing once, therefore the entire platform is transphobic. How much static did your peers give to people who wanted to do comics on Substack two years ago? And you, once again, did what? Said nothing. Now, there are more, quote, nice guys, unquote, like Jim Zub in the industry than complete assholes and psychopaths. But the problem is all these nice guys don't say jack shit when awful things happen to people from the other political party or friends of people from the other political party or friends of friends. Oh, or you guys kind of sort of know each other. You watched people get attacked in a way that was meant to drive them to suicide in ways that destroyed careers or severely hobbled them and you said nothing. Now, on a platform that still works, that still exists, but that you can't leave because you and your peers have demonized every alternative, you want to have a eulogy for the living instead of having some self-reflection and look at the freaking reign of terror your peers have imposed upon your own industry to the detriment of everyone. So just a brief angry video on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and I have nothing to promote. Well, I was up to like 3 in the morning finishing up the spreadsheet. It's one spreadsheet, but it has, you know, different tabs for knife hand blind spot, mind your business. But then also I'm doing things like Runner, which is an add-on for Jawbreakers Forever. That's done. It's printed. It's at the Fulfillment Center. So I cross-referenced manually hundreds of backers to, you know, move them over one by one. So if you order Jawbreakers Forever, you're not going to have to wait for Runner if you also ordered Knife Hand Blind Spot or Mind Your Business, it'll just go along with that order. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.